Hello, my name is Shadid Rakshit, the Committee on Economic, and Social and Cultural Rights, and this is Module 21. What is the Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights (CSR)? The CSR is the primary enforcement mechanism of the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. that is ICE SCR the ICE SCR tasks the economic and social council of united nations or the un reviewing state compliance with the covenant it is to be kept in mind in 1985 the CSR assisted the economic and social council in this process in 2013 the CSR empowered to hear individual complaints alleging state violations of economic social and cultural rights this module we introduce readers to the csr it describes the committee origin the structure the concept of progressive realization and some of the challenges in economic social and cultural rights enforcement so these are the learning objectives which are as follows that after learning outcomes or after completing this module readers should know and understand the origin and structure of the cscr b the concept of progressive realization c the challenges in forcing economic social and cultural rights the origin and structure of the cscr the international covenant on economic social and cultural rights or the ice scr is a multilateral treaty that sets forth and seeks to enforce a range of economic social and cultural rights that is escrs adopted by the un general assembly in 1966 and entered into force in 1976 as of june 2015 164 states were party to the covenant article 16 and 17 set forth the covenant's enforcement mechanism Article 16 requires states parties to submit reports on the measures which they have adopted and the progress made in achieving this observation of the rights recognized in the covenant. Article 17 provides that states file their reports in stages in accordance with the program established by the economic and the social council. and that these reports may include factors and difficulties which are affecting the fulfillment of the covenant's provisions furthermore the original enforcement mechanism of the ice scr was the economic and social council this was nothing but a political organ of united nations thus it became clear over time that the council did not possess the capacity to effectively monitor state compliance as a result the committee on economic social and cultural rights was created in 1985 the committee is an independent panel of 18 experts who elected for four year renewable terms by state parties it is to be kept in mind that the decisions on complaints and monitors the implementation of the ICE SCR the committee meets officially for a 3 week session in geneva every year furthermore the covenant must submit regular reports to the committee on how social economic and cultural rights are being implemented it is to be noted 
that the committee must in report initially within two years of accepting the covenant and every five years thereafter according to guidelines set forth by the committee. It ex the committee examines each report and addresses its concerns and recommendations to the state's party in the form of concluding observations. These concluding observations are basically as follows. The ICESCR did not originally include a mechanism to receive and adjudicate upon individual complaints against state parties. On 10 December 2008, the UN General Assembly adopted the optional protocol to the ICESCR. It empowers the Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights to hear individual complaints. The protocol entered into force on 5th May 2013. As of June 2015, 20 states were party to the optional protocol. The progressive realization of Article 2 of the ICESCR sets forth the general obligation of states or rather state parties to the government. Article 2.1 declares that each state party undertakes to take steps and these steps are essential for individually international assistance and cooperation, especially economical and technical maximum of its available resources. In other words, rights set forth in the covenant are subject to progressive realization by state parties. The concept of progressive realization is central to the enforcement of economic, social and cultural rights. It is kept in mind that there is a distinction between negative and well as positive rights. In short, civil and political rights, such as the right to free speech and the right to life are considered negative rights because they can be largely fulfilled through state inaction. The state refrains from passing laws that limit speech, then the right to free speech is largely upheld. By contrast, ESCRs are viewed as positive rights, meaning thereby that the state must take affirmative steps to fulfill them. There is a distinction between negative and positive right. The distinction is contested and in many ways is problematic. How is it problematic? It is important to understand that this distinction in the context of Article 2 of the ICESCR. ESCRS as positive rights require greater state resources for their fulfillment. The drafters of the covenant inserted into Article 2 the League of Progressive Realization to take into account differences in state development and capacity. The core rights are protected by the ICESCR are located within Article 6 and 15. They include the right to work, Article 6, the right to just and favorable working uh, conditions, Article 7, the right to form and join trade unions, Article 8, the right to social security, Article 9, the, the right to family protection, Article 10, the right to an adequate standard of living, which includes adequate food, uh, clothing and housing, Article 11, the right to health for that matter, Article 12, and the right to education, Article 13. Also, the right to engage in and benefit from culture, life, Article 15. Phrased in broad terms, Article 10 protects not only the freedom to marry who one chooses, but extends special protection to mothers during a reasonable period 
before and after childbirth. And to children who are to be protected from economic and social exploitation. Article 11 requires states to recognize that adequate food, clothing and housing constitute part of the right to an adequate standard uh, of living and calls upon states to take several measures including uh, improvements to food, you know, production, distribution and trade in effort to recognize the fundamental right of everyone to be free from hunger. The language of progressive realization should not be misunderstood. Latitude is given to states in Article 2.1 of the ICE SCR and does not imply rights within the covenant are merely aspirational. To the contrary, it imposes binding on legal obligations on state parties, including one, an obligation to take step towards the continuous improvement of economic, social and cultural conditions, and two, an obligation not to take retrogressive measures, unless under specified circumstances. It is progressive, which means making continuous forward movement, and state parties must continuously take steps forward in order to achieve the full realization of the rights recognized in the ICE SCR is immediately applicable and is not subject to limitation. Regardless of their level of development, states parties must take steps immediately to achieve the full realization of the rights enshrined in the covenant. Second concept emerges from the Maastricht guidelines number 14 on violations of economic, social and cultural rights. It states violations of economic, social and cultural rights can occur through the direct action of state. Examples of such violations include e. the adoption of any deliberately retrogressive measures to reduce the extent to which any such rights are guaranteed. g. the reduction or diversion of specific public expenditure when such restriction or diversion results in the non-enjoyment of such rights and is not accompanied by adequate measurements, measures to ensure minimum subsistence rights for everyone. It is to be noted that the Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights in its general comment is by the virtue of 3 such 1990. Any deliberately retrogressive measures would require the most careful consideration and would need to be fully justified by reference the totality of the rights provided for in the covenant and in the context of the full use of the maximum available resources. A deliberate retrogressive measures means any measure that reduces the level of protection according to the rights contained in the covenant, which is the consequence of an intentional decision by the state. This may occur, for example, if a state A adopts any legislation or policy with a direct or collateral negative effect on the enjoyment of the rights of individuals or introduces legislation that discriminates in the enjoyment of rights. B abrogates any legislation or policy consistent with these rights unless obviously outdated or replaced with equally or more consistent laws or compensatory measures. C. Makes an unjustified reduction in public expenditures devoted to implementing economic, social and cultural rights in the absence 
of adequate compensatory measures aimed to protect injured individuals. Now, there are certain challenges in enforcing economic, social and cultural rights. The ICESCR did not initially include a mechanism to receive and act upon complaints against state parties. It is to be kept in mind that such a mechanism was discussed in the drafting process. It was thought to be unworkable in light of the nature of rights protected by the ICESCR. The economic, social and cultural rights that is ESCRS are generally viewed as positive rights requiring states to expend resources and to take affirmative measures to fulfill them. The wide latitude is given to the state parties did not seem wise to include a complaint filing mechanism. Indeed, progressive realization allows states to proceed at their own pace in light of resource constraints and developmental objectives to fulfill their obligations in the long term. States were then allowed to forego the complete fulfillment of ESCRS in the short term, a practice that would be defeated by institution individual complaint mechanism. It is difficult to determine precisely when ESCRS are violated. For instance, that a state provides adequate food and shelter to 80% of its citizens. At the same time, it does not have the resource to provide those basic needs to the remaining 20%. Now suppose if resources were allocated to fulfill the nutritional and housing needs of those remaining citizens, they would have to be taken uh, from state subsidies to important industries. According to the state, if this redistribution took place, it would cause a severe economic recession and potentially lead to even more citizens being deprived of basic needs. Article 11 of the ICE SCR requires states to take measures towards providing all citizens with an adequate standard of living. So what is the state to do in this situation? Is a question. Is it A, violating Article 11, respect to the 20% of the citizens who do not have adequate food and shelter, and if it took measures to fulfill the rights of those citizens, would it then violate the same rights vis-a-vis -vis other citizens who are deprived of basic needs because of a state-induced economic recession? The drafters of the ICE SCR allowed states to report on their own progress, including difficulties faced in the implementation of the obligations within the covenant. By contrast, that the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the ICCPR, has always permitted complaints to be filed. The Human Rights Committee of the ICCPR is an expert body specifically tasked to enforce the ICCPR is empowered to examine complaints filed against a state party either by other states or by individual whose rights are violated by that state. Fits with the widespread view with it is more straightforward to judge violations of civil and political rights and that these rights are readily enforceable and not subject to progressive realization. Thus, the CSR has struggled to ensure state compliance, self-reporting procedure in Article 16 of the ICSCR. Several states have not submitted reports by the deadline set by the committee. 
In 1996, for instance, 88 state parties were overdue in their reports, while an additional 17 states had not filed a report in 10 years. States report on themselves. There have been complaints that states exaggerate their progress and in some instances minimize their setbacks in implementing their obligations under the covenant. The committee recognized this shortcoming and in 1992 invited all concerned bodies and individuals to submit relevant and appropriate documentation with respect to each state a compliance with the ICESCR, this has allowed NGOs to participate in the reporting process. NGOs are not permitted to participate in the committee dialogue with state parties. They may submit relevant written information to the committee and give and pres oral presentations at the beginning of each of the committees. Sessions with respect to state committees or compliance with ICE SCR. It greatly increases accountability as the committee is no longer forced to rely on the state's claim of its own progress with respect to fully realizing the ESCRS in the convention. Input of NGOs allowing the committee to gain a more accurate view of state compliance and perform its role more effectively is essential. There is an optional protocol to the ICE SCR 2008 that permits the committee to hear individual complaints against state parties. It only has 20 state parties and does not yet have authority to receive individual complaints against a vast majority of states. To summarize, it can be stated that the Committee on the Economic, Social and the Cultural Rights or the CESCR has become the primary enforcement mechanism of the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, that is ICESCR. It was not always so. Article 17 of the Covenant identified the Economic and Social Council, a political organ of the United Nations, and as the body that would establish a program under which state parties, as Article 16, would report on the measures which they have adopted and the progress made in achieving the observance of the rights recognized under the covenant. Over time, however, it became evident that the Council could not effectively monitor state compliance. The Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights was therefore created in 1985 to assist in the work of the Council. The Committee is an independent panel of 18 experts who are elected for four renewable terms by states, parties, all state parties to the covenant are required to submit regular reports to the committee on their progress in implementing economic, social and cultural rights within their jurisdictions. As per Article 2.1 of the ICESCR, rights enshrined within the covenant are subject to the progressive realization. This provision requires that every state party undertakes to take steps individually and through international assistance and cooperation, especially economic and technical to the maximum of its available resources, with a view to achieving progressively the full realization of the rights recognized in the present covenant by all appropriate means while 
compliance with these rights may vary among states parties due to the availability of resources the iccr does impose legally binding obligations thus it is incorrect to characterize economic social and cultural rights as merely aspirational this covenant imposes an obligation on each state parties to take steps towards the continuous improvement of economic social and cultural conditions and a further obligation not to take deliberately retrogressive measures due in part to difficulties in conceptualizing and measuring progress in the fulfillment of economic social and cultural rights the csr has struggled to ensure state compliance with the self reporting procedure under article 17 of the covenant several states have not submitted reports by the deadline set by the committee in addition because states reports on themselves some states have exaggerated their progress or minimized their setbacks in fulfilling the rights within the covenant the committee recognized this shortcomings and in 1992 invited all concerned bodies and its individuals to submit relevant and appropriate documentation with respect to each state compliance with the icescr is allowed ngos to participate in the reporting process increasing its accuracy and transparency in addition since 2008 the cscr has been empowered to bear individual complaints through the optional protocol to the icescr and thus making it a social and a cultural thing thank you okay.